So they change the, the computer, they change the, the platform, but they don't change the mind. What you lose is done. Yep. It's done. The next day, the next day, the next week, it's just the net. It doesn't have nothing to do with you or the losers. What it lose have been lost. It. All right. Hello and welcome. My name is Lindsay Duff. I'm Diego. <laughs> and we want to welcome you to Filling the Gap, a podcast by You Profit Trader. Today, we're going to be speaking to Jose Santos, uh, who I have known for quite some time, I guess about uh, seven, six years now or so. And um, he is also a trader here with you, a funded trader with you, Profit Trader. And so we're going to get to know a little bit about Yose today. So welcome, Yose. How are you doing today? I'm very happy to be here with all the community, you Profit Trader community. I'm with you, uh, someone that I appreciate a lot because when I was starting to do trading, I remember that I was looking your video in YouTube. And I just, I was looking how, how this, how you were so relaxed trading, speaking about, <laughs> and I said, I want that kind of mentality. She was like, like, like she was just doing anything else, just trading here, so relaxed. And me just so nervous <laughs> in my first years. I said, I want that kind of uh, mind of the trading. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I'm glad I could help, you know, and especially seeing where you're at now and how well you're doing with it. It's uh, it gives me a lot of um, joy to see that with you. Um, and one of the other things that I love now is, you know, at that time you you didn't have any you didn't have your child and you weren't married, but now you're married and you have a child. And I see that your wife is trading now as well. Right. She's yeah. right. We to trade uh, Russell. I trade Nasdaq, but she prefer Russell because is better, she, she feels it's better for her, for her yeah. personality. And that's nice. the point. So no, everybody has to trade the same market. So, and it, and, and that's true. You know, that's one of the good things is that you don't have to trade the same markets. You can really be versatile with, with things and, um, choose what you want really more or less. Um, is it something that you, you two plan on teaching to your son someday as well? I like NASDAQ, you know, I am most risk taker, but. Uh, I know there are a lot of people that don't have this kind of passions for trade Nasdaq because it's really moved so quickly. And you say, uh, I, I didn't know that your that wife, like she trade too, like she's a trader too. But how, how, how did that happen? Like, did you introduce her? Like, you convince her to start trading or? Oh, <laughs> or, or she was like, I mean, you're doing pretty good. I'm, I'm going to start trading too. She was on my process. Uh, I remember when I was over trading a lot and she began to help me with that. I told to her, if I make more than three trades in one day, you're going to take me out the computer. She's going to be my supervisor. And that way, <laughs> she <took laughs> she began to... <laughs> she's a good yeah. accountability partner. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he was the, the risk, risk account manager. Yeah. There is no better, there is no better risk account manager than, than a woman. So, <laughs> you're a trick. I have to agree <laughs> with that, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because I don't even yeah. think she was trading. You and I went to dinner, uh, gosh, it was right before the pandemic, I think, before that hit, we went to dinner. And um, I don't think your wife was trading then. So, how's... How's her process been? Is she doing pretty good with it as well? I always told to the, I always say to the traders, don't try to convince you your wife. If she look your results, if she look money, she only you don't have to speak a lot. Yeah. So when when she began to see the money, when she began to see that it's really a uh, that is not just a play game with bar candlestick here. No, it's real. Then she's like, okay, I want to do it too. <laughs> and she began to do it. That's awesome. Um, so I know that you you had uh, come to me for a little bit of help whenever you started trading, but um, talk to me a little bit about the process of you learning, not necessarily 
you know, what you learned with me, but, you know, maybe some misconceptions or some realizations that you had as you were learning, maybe some things that you found out weren't exactly um, true that you had learned uh, from other people along the way and some things that you realized about yourself uh, as you were learning to trade. We have to be focused on the long time. Most of the traders, we arrived this and we won in three months or four months. Yeah, oh, I want to be a rich in three months. No, it's not work that way. But if you are focused, if you really love that, if you are, have a passion with this and you playing a long run, it's like, like, like to be doctor, you know, to be doctor, nobody is going to the school to be doctor and two years. Okay. I want to make operation of open heart. Nobody's going to do that <laughs> to years. Uh, it's the same thing with trading. It's work. It's nice. It, I've seen it's the best reflection of the world, but it's going to take time. Um, do you think to the, do you think to the, this time is it is it good that you know to diversify or to stay trading just one asset class? For example, is it better just to stay trading futures or instead you should trade futures and forex and also stocks? Like, what do you think? You have to be better in one sense. Just focus on one thing, and then you can uh, be moving from one market to other market. Because one of the mistakes, big mistake that the new traders do, they change every three, every two months. They change the market, they change methodology, they change T-shirt, they say the they are changing indicators. So they try to find you know the holy grail. They try to find, and the only thing that they have to change are themselves most of the time. So they change the, the computer, they change the, the platform, but they don't change their mind. Yeah. And that's why uh, my first year, my first year was so hard because I was changing everything, but I was over trading, over trading, over trading, over trading, over trading. And, and the product of over trading is that I, that I have to control myself, not control the markets. Yeah. And you said, you know, something a little bit earlier about your wife keeping you <laughs> kind of in line and um, that you were, you know, a little frustrated in the beginning. So, um, you know, a lot of people do get caught up in the psychological aspect of things and um, get a little frustrated when things aren't going their way. So, you know, what are some tips you might have for someone who is getting frustrated with their trading and um, maybe think of giving up even? So what are maybe some, some, some pointers or some tricks that you may have used along the way to help you overcome those things. You need to trade and plan. If you have to pay some mentor to teach you one, or you want to make it by yourself, but you need to understand all the, the points of a good trading plan. After that, you have to control the number of your trade. It's very hard to get frustrated if you are just doing one trade by day. It's very hard to get frustrated. Most of the traders that are frustrated because they are taking 10 trades night trades or they are risking uh, too much in just one trade if you keep the the risk under control five percent or two percent and you just made one or two trade for the first year and if you want to do whatever you want in two years or five years okay you can do whatever you want but the first two years i think it's very important that you keep the control on the risk and the number of the trade that you are doing absolutely um, I mean, it's been a couple of years since, you know, you and I worked together. So I'm sure that your trading has kind of evolved. Um, you know, what kind of things trade uh, drive your trading decisions? And, you know, what do you think is like some of your favorite signals to to take whenever you trade? I love to let profit and run. I think that's a passion for me to let profit and run. So I I'll always try. I like the slogan. I love <laughs> the slogan. The slogan? Yeah. This is not, oh, yeah. And let net proper ruin is my my personal yeah. slogan, you know, yeah. because uh, I discovered that a lot of traders they, they know how to enter the market, they know how to put the stop loss, but as soon as the market want to give them money, they said, okay, no market, don't give me more money, I will go now. And that's the day the market want to give you money. I, you don't <laughs> don't let the person ruin. <laughs> so uh, I based a lot of my my trades on supply and demand, and as soon as the trade told me, okay, you are in good positions, you are in the good directions. Okay, now let's gonna let the performer run. 
and let's gonna try to add more positions on that direction. It's like Jesse Livermore said, he said, the normal people, uh, they are afraid when they are winning and they, ha they have hope when they are losing. When it's the opposite, you should have hope when the trade is giving you money. Okay, let's gonna give a little chance. Maybe he's gonna give me more. But when he's against you, okay, no, let's go, let's go. But, you know, it takes time to change uh, that way of thinking. Yeah, and it takes money. Yeah, I can really relate to that. You know, like it probably happened to everyone who traded in yeah. Waffle. Like when you have a trade, a trader go, like, goes against you, sometimes it can happen that you can feel, okay, maybe put the, let me put the stop a little bit more down. Yeah. This is going to go all the way around. This if I just keep moving it a little bit more. And, you know, I think that's just kind of a way that a lot of people are brought up to think in general. And then they, you know, I've always said whatever um, feelings and habits that we have in our personal lives, we're going to have in our trading lives. It's going to yeah. show in our trading. And so it is really taking a way to change the way you think and you act and you feel to change that in your trading as well. So, and how do we change that? Because obviously it's not a good uh, habit, you know? Yeah, it takes a lot of like interest. Lose some money. Yeah, <laughs> I mean. Learn to lose and, you know, okay, yeah. take that loss. and. Well, it's learning to uh, take it as a lesson actually look at it and taking it as a lesson and say, what can I learn from this? Instead of looking at it and going, oh, I'm so stupid. I can't believe I did that kind of thing. Instead of like beating yourself up over this kind of thing, you're really just saying, okay, I'm going to take this loss and I'm going to learn from it. That's one of the hardest things about trading that you face, You, I mean, whenever you put the, the computer on and you connect your platform and you're connected to the market and you start, you're going to put a trade, I mean, it's just, it's, it's binary. You, you can lose or, or win, right? Mm -hmm. So you, when you start trading, you face yourself every day against that possibility of losing. And I think like it, it actually changed you. you. Do you feel, do you feel that this have changed you? Jose, what you are, you will see that in the market, in the trade performance. Uh, if I see uh, someone trade performance, I will know if they have their rooms, organized or they are disorganized just we've seen you triple phone i can i can know how you act <laughs> and besides, it's, like, it's, a, it's almost like like going and seeing uh, someone's room you know yeah, so yeah. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. if you show me your triple performance i will see you live <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm gonna know how you live yeah yeah <laughs> because if you are desperate that's is good you you will see that in you're gonna make maybe four or five trades in just in the first five minutes of the market. Mm -hmm. If you are desperate, if you, I want money, I want money. In the five, 10 minutes, you will have 10 or five trades. Okay, so you say when you, when you see someone trade performance, you see like, you, but you basically so, see the whole person, let's say, right? Yeah. Think the same? Absolutely. So basically you guys both mentors. So are you, do you have, I mean, this is the me. So do you think like as mentors, when you have to coach people, do you have, did you become sort of, some sort of psychologist? Yes, absolutely. A hundred percent. Yeah. Cause you've got the, t I mean, you know, they'll come to you and, you know, almost in tears crying about things and you have to sit and say, okay, what's causing this? You know, what kind of things? And, yeah. you know, for me personally, I suggest things like, uh, the power of now and the power of vulnerability, teaching people how, you know, as traders, we have to learn how to be vulnerable yep. because, you know, we're risking things every day. Yep. And so um, I find a lot of people, I don't, I don't give them trading books or anything like that. I give them books that are going to help them improve their personal lives and it helps them improve their trading lives as, as well. So yeah, I, you, you have to be in the present when we are trading. Yes. So in life, true. If you are people that you always are talking about your past, your bad past, then you're gonna be. This is gonna happen when you have bad traits. You are gonna be remember your bad traits. Oh, if you are people that are very future for the future, you wanna you wanna fight with the market because it doesn't go where you seen it will go. So absolutely. We, yeah. So so in trading and in life. You have for to have peace. You have to be in the present. You have to to realize what you have right now. To be sensible with who you are, what you have, 
and to try to achieve more, but not with anxiety. That's the same in the market. You have to trade every day, uh, to cut your losses, be thankful for what the market gives you that day. Um, mm -hmm. The next day, the battle is going to continue. Not, don't, look, don't try to be, that day I want to be a winner. That day I want to duplicate my account. That day, in the next trade, in the next trade is my trade. No, the next trade can happen, you know, the, no wars can begin in the next trade. You said you something to too that I really love. You said something about being grateful for it and, you know, teaching people to be grateful even for the losses because it is a chance to learn because a lot of people come in and expect to be perfect immediately and you you can't just be perfect. You have to learn. I mean, you know, we all fall when we're learning to walk. You know, there's a good chance when we're learning to drive a car, we might wreck that car a time or two, get a little bump or a scratch or something, you know? <laughs> And we have to be okay with that and say, you know, it's just part of it. And I've got to learn from that. Like, who, you know, next time I'm looking over my shoulder before I move into the next lane, you know, those kind of things. Okay. Well, but, but let's say you get this bump when you're uh -huh. trading, right? And I mean, you get your car crashed. Yeah. Trading. So how, how, I'm going to ask you this and I'm going to ask you, Joseph, how do you deal or how do you deal with, with that frustration? Well, let's hear what Joseph, Joseph has to say first. But okay. Okay. <laughs> So just say when when this happened, when did you know when the car mm -hmm. get crashed or when you when the things doesn't go as you think as you expected? Because obviously when you go trade the market, you expect to go always on the green side. This is obviously that's that's why you open the computer every day. That's why you trade. But okay, we risk there is there is risk on it. Uh, we know that we can go the other way, and we accept the losses and everything. But how do you deal with with frustration when this happened? You know, you try to focus on the lessons. I remember when I lose 60,000 US in just one night. I remember that night. 60,000 US in just one night. You know, it's a, it's a hit, you know, <laughs> it hits you. But as soon as I hit, okay, why this happened? Why I do wrong? And maybe I, I yeah, I lose 60 US, 60,000 US, but I could win 60,000 US. I just have to change the trade. So why I didn't see, why I should see. What I do good, what I do bad. What I do bad, I was, you know, average, average the losing. I was doing that. I was average the losing. And um, then I discovered if I do this same thing, but with the winning trades, then I'm going to earn a lot. And that's what happened the next day. The next day, I average bought the the profit. I am, I am, I, am, I get back my sixty thousand US. <laughs> but, I, but okay. But you saying like when you when you get a loss that it makes you frustrated, you try to find the lesson. But to try to find yeah. the lesson, you gotta oh, focus on the lesson. Foc no, not focus in the money. Uh, no, focus on the lesson. That's what is teaching me. But how is it gonna, how this gonna make make me better for tomorrow? But do you mean like you go and study the chart? Like you, you say, okay, I'm frustrated. I understand you will take a glass of water or whatever you want. And then you come back and do you study the chart? Like you get the chart on your computer and you start, okay, let me analyze everything as it happened again. And why did it, so what was the thing yeah. that I could have done better? So do you spend more time the trading the first or the first minute the chart? No, the first minute you have to relax, you know, if you have to be 10 or 15 minutes or maybe one day or two weeks, it's going to depend how this affects you. Because I am very resilient person. I am very, very resilient person. If you hear me, if I fall down today, okay, tomorrow will be, I will be back and better. But there are other people, there are other brands that are taking more time, maybe two weeks, maybe three days. But after you relax, then you have to come with your mind cool you go mind to analysis what i do bad what i should what i what i should do what i don't do what i should do <laughs> the moment i would say okay what i do bad yeah but what good things you don't do that's important too something so, i want to say time. something about that really quick too like um my mantra a lot of times when i'm losing is it if i lose i learn if i and i had literally put that through my head like if i lose i learn but the thing is is you're not always losing because of what the market's doing. You could have some things going on in your head that you're really frustrated with outside of the market that you're bringing into mm -hmm. that with you. And you have to look at that too. Like, am I having a bad day? Am I, am I tired? Am I hungover? 
Am I, you know, am I mad at my kids? Am I, you know, something is something in the way of allowing me to be present and focused. And because when you're present, um, you know, there's a much better chance of you doing well that day. Even if you take a loss a real quick, like, oh, okay, I, can, I see that I, you know, I minimized my risk. I got out before it like took me the whole way or whatever. And then you're ready, prepared for the next one. For sure. And if you don't feel good, it's, it's wise to avoid the risk. Exactly. And if not trading that day. And sometimes it takes trading like that a few times to realize that, oh man, I was really in a grouchy mood today. I wasn't feeling good today. I should not have been trading. I need to focus on that next time so that when I am tired, I know next time I need to not be in the market. So you start to get yeah. yourself better. And one thing important to me is uh, don't try to focus on, on to get back the money that you lose. What you lose is done. Yep. It's done. The next trade, the next day, the next week, it's just the net. It doesn't have nothing to do with you or the losers. What you lose have been lost. So don't trade for, let me take, let me get back my money. No. Just try to follow your plan. Try to avoid. I have to come back. I have to take uh, to come back. I have to take to take the, the what the money what the market take me. No, no, no. That's gonna make you to trade just for gonna money. No, on the trading plan. Okay, that's a yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, I mean it's true, you know, because when and that's something that I tell people a lot because it's this this delicate dance between not focusing on the money and also being <laughs> respectful <laughs> of the money, you know, because it's there. It's in your face every time. But I, I definitely try to think of it in points instead of dollar bills at times. Um, and then I also look at it and like, did I do the right thing? Even if I lost, was I doing the right thing? You know, because a lot of people will do the right thing and it still loses. It, it gives you the signal it sets up and there's nothing you can do about a spike in the opposite direction. Um, so it's, did I do the right thing? And as long as I'm doing the right thing, then I know I'm on the right path and I'm working towards those things that can improve my trading. But definitely keeping your mind off of the money um, makes a huge, huge difference. Okay, so we have to see the losses as lessons, right? Absolutely. Trying, okay, not not the revenge trading. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I think we've all been there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you were saying what you were saying before, Jose. You said like, like okay, you try to when there is a there is a loss, you try to study the chart. Like I will ask you, do you spend time uh, like studying the chart? Like for instance, like yeah, I don't know. Do you spend like how, how how often do you study the chart? How often do you go and reflect on your losses? Like. Okay, maybe I didn't see this. Do you do that? Is that part of a of, of yeah that a good yeah. trader should have? I think every day you should have five ten minutes for to try to reflect after everything happens. Try to reflect. But the, the important thing is not just the charts. I think there is something more important than the chart is to study you. Mm -hmm. uh, how 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 I feel with that? How I was trading. Uh, I was anxious because, you know, your body show if you are desperate. Your body show, have signs. You can feel it. Yeah, you start You're vibrating. Yeah. <laughs> sort of <laughs> breath, you know, yeah. and those kind of things. How about if you're trading, uh, you know, relax, you want to be okay. Okay, but if you are trading with more, you want to be, come on, market, come on, come on, come on, move, move, move. You want to see it. <laughs> so we have to become a spare on understand how you how how you do when the market do some do something for example how you react when the markets go against what you see in the market will go you get angry you get upset oh i study so much the saturday and the sunday and then the monday the market's gonna take me money it's not fair <laughs> that's what you mean yeah well here's and another thing too you you know studying those trades you may even see that you had a trade that won that probably shouldn't have, that you put too much risk on. And you have to learn from that as well to say like, you know, that one won. And sometimes you look at that and you go, oh, well, I did great, but it really wasn't the best of trades. And you need to learn that if I take that again, it's probably going to eat my lunch, you know? <laughs> and so you got to learn from those as well. After you trade, after you finish, you have to supervise that you are doing what your trading plan said that you should do it. 
because maybe you you do you you do three trades, but of those three trades, just one was arrived with your trading plan. But after you have a trading plan and we finish a trade, we become we become the supervisor. I have to supervise that Jose is doing what he said he's gonna do. That is the report. In a few words, what do you put on a trading plan? Uh, things like traders have to do two things. My job, my job are, are two. The first one, um, I my job is to try to to follow uh, the advantage, to explode the advantage. That's my first job, to identify the uh, advantage. And my second job is to control the risk. So every day I have to enter with the advantage, the statistic, with the trade that I said I want to do it, and I have. And the second one, if this trade doesn't work, then I have to control the loss. So I was to be in mind that that's are my two jobs. My job is not to guess what is going to happen in the future. My job is not to know what's going to happen. So you mean like a, like a strategy to get in the market? So you identify the... the what is my position? What, what I have to enter? What is my advantage? What I have opportunity? How is? How look? How look? How... That that your strategy is gonna give you that, yeah. Okay, and and then to manage risk, so you will have to use what do you use? Use a percentage of the. Yeah, I'm curious. What does your risk to reward look like, too? It's gonna depend. It's gonna depend. Um, there are some account that I have for for risk five or two percent, or there are other accounts that are for so for some specific entry that is going to, you know, it's going to reach more. Uh, for example, account for low risk and account for high risk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the like the fund managers, you know, when they they have like, okay, how, 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 how good do you tolerate risk? Like you lower, medium or high? And then you, okay, you have a medium and high account. <laughs> there, there are two ways of you pass a, a uh, trading combined. One is you trade, you know, three lads with five to percent, and it's gonna take you no know, more time. But the other one is all or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you hit the big trade, or you get the target, or you're gonna get the loss. What I said. Yeah. And if you got both, you need a good advantage for that. Which is it best? I wanna have best ask you about that. I wanna ask you how and where. Do you find the advantage in the market? There are A trade, B trade, and C trades. So the the A trade is that one that you know that that, that you love that trade. Is that one that you have a lot of experience with that? Is that one that you feel sure? You know, if when when the market told you, okay, you have to take me, come come for me, come for me, and you feel it. And the other one, the B one, is this trade. You know, is have a good study this advantage, but Sometimes worse, sometimes not so much. Um, the C trade, the C trade, is not gonna give you a lot of money, but you do it. So yeah, no, but, but, I, I, but I think I think more, like we would like to hear more, and our like the people who listen to the podcast too. Like how how did you really find the advantage in the market? Like which strategy do you use? I don't wanna like not it deeply, but like using volume or time and sales. On, do you know, oh. but we would like to really know that, but what do you think if we let this for our next podcast? That's Joe. good. I just, I just have one last question that I really do like some advice that he, like, what's one, I just want to know one piece of advice that you may have got heard along the line from someone or someone told you that you think has made a difference in your trading and will make a difference in other people's trading if they follow that kind of advice. And the first two years. Don't over afraid. This is gonna kill your mind. It's gonna destroy your account. The first two years, if you keep the control and the number of the trade, you will not have a full straight career of trading. You're gonna have more peers. You will see better the markets. You're gonna be more under control. If you keep the first two years, don't trade a lot. Uh, less is more here. It's not. It's not like the normal world. This is different wall. You have if you do less, maybe you're gonna be more pieces and you're gonna earn more. Keep doing the same thing every day. Yeah. Your benefits board. It start start small. Don't try and like jump into it with, you know, 
a giant uh, a giant amount when you've got a tiny account. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's a good one. I think in the next podcast, would you tell us more about your advantage? I, uh, I am. We'll ask you. Okay. <laughs> As always, it's a, it's a pleasure talking with you, Jose, and uh, I look forward to seeing you again one day in the future. Too. I'm sorry that we missed each other in Colombia, but yeah. <laughs> maybe next time. <laughs> you left right as I got here. Yeah, thank you. Go to Europe. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. Oh, I am. I'm going to be in London in a couple of weeks. So, <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, nice, to, nice to meet you. Well, guys, uh, thank you for joining in. Yes, thank you for being here. I said it good in English. Thank you for joining in. Yes, and good to join in. Uh, you can follow the post podcast on Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, and on Instagram. Uh, at you profit trader with an R at the end or you profit official. Yeah. Thank you so much, Joseph. It was super. All right. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, John.